Hey, I'm here with actor Richie Coster, who currently, or for at least the next three days, will be finishing up a run in Hamlet at the Public Theater here in New York. What's this whole experience been like for you? And, uh, and we'll rewind and go back to the earlier part of your career. Okay, uh, well this experience has been, um, I won't say a joy from beginning to end because rehearsals for a while were rough, you know. They were very demanding and very challenging mm -hmm. and um, I don't take well to being challenged and I was sulky for a good few days mm -hmm. there. But even on those days, so every day of this process, I've, I've, been, I've been walking here with a bounce in this thing not being able to wait to get to rehearsal or get to the um, You know, actors talk about you go through that production that that is the one for you, mm -hmm. you know, where you kind of felt at the pinnacle of what you do and it was so joyful and you can never quite, quite re recreate it and, and part of me is thinking, okay, this is the one for me, you know, this is... You know, God hope when I get to 80 or 90 years old, this is the one I'll be thinking about. <laughs> yeah. It's what been a, such, such good fun. It's a, it's a four hour production. How do you how do you build the stamina to, to, to go through? It's not like a movie where you can just be like, oh, let's take a break. I need to take a break. Right. It's, I mean, you get a, a small intermission, but you know, you pretty much have to go straight through. Yeah. Um, I never consciously worked on stamina. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just found that at the end of the four hours I felt fine, you know, which might be an indication of how much I'm putting out in the play or right. not, but I think what happened is subconsciously uh, one learns to pace oneself, you know, and, and, as, and as I was just saying, you, you, you find that roadmap through the play and you're like, okay, this is the beginning for me, so lots of energy, and then, okay, I can back off for a little bit and take the foot off the gas for the next two scenes. Right. Here I've got to be sitting down just watching, which is an absolute joy to watch the other guys do that stuff. This bit comes and that's hard, and once I'm over that bump, I can sail to the end. And so it's breaking up in chunks, it helps. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and I think the body just gets used to um, conservation. Mm -hmm. Now, to take it back a little bit before Hamlet, when did you first decide you wanted to be an actor? What was, you know? Uh, I think I was 16 years old. I was at high school mm -hmm. back in England. Um, I got blackmailed into doing a school play. Uh, and it was great. The, um, the Good Person of Sichuan by Burst Holbrecht. Mm -hmm. And I had such fun, and people seem to respond to what I do. But I automatically started to think, well, okay, I'll, maybe I could think about doing this for a living. Uh, I think just previous to that, I wanted to be an astronaut, so everyone around me was quite used to unreasonable expectations <laughs> on my part as to what I was going to do for my life. But um, one way or another, it, it happened. And now, did you make a conscious a decision to come here to the States to pursue your career? No, I, um, you know, I left drama school and I spent uh, the wilderness years in, in England trying to be an actor. You know, I, I had my walk on on the soap operas and a play here and a play there with minor roles, but it just wasn't working and I was so unemployed for so long. And, um, it just didn't suit, so to cut a long story short, I um, discovered bartending and was suddenly having a lot of fun and you know, drinking a lot and taking a lot of drugs and, and earning a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, this suits me better than being an unemployed actor, so I kind of gave up. Uh, cut to a couple of years later, I came to America for a vacation with my wife, who's American. Vacation ended, we didn't have to go back because we were now married. A couple of years later, moved from upstate New York down into Manhattan and I stumbled into an acting job. I was serving someplace, uh, someone at a bar, 
who said, oh, my agent just lost an English client. Maybe he'll be interested in taking you on. I'll lie for you and I'll see my work. And I found myself with an agent who knew that there was an English production coming up. So I thought to have an English client might be useful. So you know, I got the agent and I got that job. And so I was an actor again. And um, that was 20 so years ago. And it started to work out, and I haven't had to go back to bartending for um, uh, 18 years. Good, and you're you're certainly busy. After you do this show, you have a, a new show uh, on TV called ha uh, Happy. Yep. Sticking with the HA, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why don't you talk a little bit about that project? Uh, that's a that's a that's a show for uh, Sci-Fi Network, mm -hmm. um, which was. It's about a, it's 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 about a very dark, brutal Brooklyn, and about a very dark, brutal hitman played by played by Chris Maloney, and uh, he starts getting visited by a small blue floating unicorn, uh, who's his child's imaginary friend, and his child has been kidnapped, and so the imaginary friend has come to enlist his help, and. Um, It's as strange and as silly as that sounds, but I think it's great. It's got a lovely, dark, dark sensibility to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's fantastical. And I'll be giving my usual mob boss performance. <laughs> uh, but they've let me play with it a little, because um, playing the mob boss can, be, can become a little dull. Mm -hmm. Always glad of the work, but playing the mob boss can be a bit boring. Right. But uh, they're letting me be silly with this one. So yeah, you have played a lot of heavies uh, in your career. Yeah. Is is there a project or, or a certain thing you would like to step out and do, or do you feel comfortable to do a comedy? And uh, I'd I'd love to do a comedy. I don't know how funny I am. I don't think I have the best sense of timing in the world. I've done comedic before, and it seems to go okay. Um, but if you know, if the heavy keeps coming my way for the rest of my career, then that's fine. You'll be happy. Yeah, it's still a joy. Right. Now you've had uh, pretty substantial roles on a number of shows. Is there one that has stuck out to you more than another? Yeah, luck. A TV show I did for HBO uh, mm -hmm. a few years ago. That was with Dustin Hoffman, right? Yeah. It wasn't a heavy I was playing. It was a thoroughly, thoroughly nice guy who was a little slow in the head, but just a genial, loving spirit. And it was such a refreshing change. Um, I didn't realize how much playing the heavy seems to darken my worldview. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying that I'm some uh, uh, method actor that takes that world with him around wherever he goes. Right. But, you, know, you, you play dark games, it's just going to leave, come with you every now and again. And, and I was just so happy playing this happy fellow. Yeah. And, um, it was a joy to do that one. So, yeah. Now, you were also on um, Billions for a while. And mm -hmm. What was that experience like? Great, what a lovely set. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of talented, friendly people, and mm -hmm. um, the cast were great and very welcoming. I wasn't there long, I think I did in all four days work for them, four, maybe five days. Oh, really? And it was kind of get in, do the scene, and get out. Right, right. I think I'd have one scene per episode, so I'd, I'd be working on that one day, maybe every three weeks, every mm -hmm. month. But it was great. I'd always walk away from the set thinking, oh, that was a good day's work. Right. Um, and I love the show as well. And you also did show with Blue. Are, are, are you primarily going to stay focused on being an East Coast actor and stay in stage work? And uh, I think so. This is home. Mm -hmm. I, I lived in LA uh, when I did Lark, and that was fun. But um, you know, for the most part, I've lived here in New York for twenty over twenty years, and it's home. Yeah. And this is where my wife is, and this is where her career is, and. Um, I want to be close to doing theatre again, for, for doing theatre, and uh, it suits me being in New York. And you can also do the other projects when you're doing theatre, if, if they yeah. can schedule you in during the day. Yeah. So you actually kind of have the best of both worlds. 
Is there a, is there a genre that you feel the most comfortable in? Is it stage? Is it? I think stage is what I'm best at. Mm -hmm. um, I don't claim to be any expert at it, but I think I certainly understand the mechanics of stage acting far more than I understand the mechanics of screen acting. Mm -hmm. Because even though I've been doing it so long and I've done a lot of work, and, you know, and some of it was reasonable, I still don't quite get how to work for the camera. Mm -hmm. um, I have a problem with science. I mean, it seems to me, not that I work, watch my work usually because that kind of ruins the whole experience for me, but I'm either playing a touch too big or a touch too small. And I, I can't seem to find the sweet spot. That being said, I love being on a set. I'd love being on the set. It's a lovely place to be. And now you find you find that sweet spot easier when you're in the moment with a live audience easier? Y yeah, because you can you can feel the feedback. Mm -hmm. and, and not to say that you're following the audience blindly in, in what they want, but you, you can feel it when a certain side... Basically, you feel it when you lose them. You right. feel it when you have them. You feel it when they go... When they just dance out of your grasp. Um, and I'm a ham, playing big as I do. The yeah. theatre kind of accommodates that. Especially the way I play roles. I mean, I, I, I kind of make. I'm not a subtle actor, I make mm -hmm. bold choices, big choices. Yeah. And, um, and they get. And the theatre can hold those, you know. What, what has been the most challenging part of being part of this production of Hamlet? Uh, Vulnerability, um, getting over a fear and anger. Uh, I play anger emotionally on stage. Anger comes to me very easily, and so it happens a lot that everything I play gets tinged with a kind of simmering rage, which is not always appropriate. And, and Sam was always pushing me to like, let's find more colors. And, and let's be vulnerable to the audience and let's not... Here's what's been challenging is that I usually I make a construct of a performance. It's like, it's, it's like a mask. And I like build it and I don it before the show and then I go out and I, and I take it for a spin. And Sam has always been wanting and pushing to you know, be Claudius, but be Richard. Right. And I would be going through what's happening on stage, treat it as current events, and uh, be in the moment. And it's hard to do that when you're, you know, operating the pulleys and levers for the, the construct that I've right. built around with. So he was always trying to strip me of this stuff, my tricks, my toys, um, and just be in the moment and vulnerable. And Sometimes I hit it and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I revert back to you know, the fireworks I've stored in my pocket. And sometimes, you know, I can get, sometimes I get through a lot of the performance by playing the moment. Has there uh, been a time during this particular engagement that you broke in character and, and started laughing based on something that either goes wrong or. Because it's a very heavy play, so would that take you out of it too quickly? Um, it's I mean, not I know we spoke about the lasagna incident. Yeah, and I always hold it together when stuff like that happens, but I'm, I'm not one for corpsing. I don't know if you say corpsing here in America, it's what do we call it back in Britain, when you laugh, when you can't oh, yeah. I, I'm not one for doing that, but last week one day I was, I was in the midst of a, a heated exchange with um, Hamlet. And I said the word England, and for some reason I hit the G, strangely. And he said the next line, which also contained the word England, and he hit the G in exactly the same way. I don't think anyone in the audience noticed, but, but he said that, and then we stared at each other, and I, I felt myself having to suppress a laugh, and he could see it, and he smiled, and that made me want to laugh more. It's the only occasion. This whole time. In years that that has happened, decades. So thank you so much for taking time uh, before a performance to meet up with me and uh, oh, for this interview. And uh, best of luck on the new show. Thank Look you. forward to seeing it. Much obliged.